So let's let's start, okay? I think you, you know me, or at least we will not be here. Uh, my name is Filipe Oliveira, I'm Portuguese, I work for Aquaflora. I'm in uh, aquascaping for about 25 years, more or less. Uh, more or less here, uh, we get age, so uh, before it was 20, 20, it's like my age. Uh, when we do 40, then it's 40, 40, 40, till we get 45, and then we get 45, it's 45, 45, till 50, so. I don't know <laughs> exactly. I know that uh, I won the 10th place and so many around 2005, 2006, 7, 8, and then became judge of uh, some of the other contests. And um, of course, I became professionally uh, aquascaper um, probably 15 years ago. But uh, what I mean professional aquascaper, we just don't survive by doing only aquascaping because we cannot be aquascaping every single day. Of course, I have used the multimedia, I have used also social media. And there is another kind of jobs that I'm doing directly or mainly for Aquaflora. The aquascaping is one of them, uh, like the activities. The last one I had was here, one year ago. I am lying because I was here yesterday, so. But if just for you have in mind, COVID affected uh, all of us. Somehow that in the moment was not possible to have anybody attending a workshop in the shop or even unless it was in the garden, but even with all the restrictions and um, depending on each country was always a big problem. So we couldn't even travel. So I really hope that things get back to normal and we can get more activities like this. So a big thank you in my name and behalf of the Aquaflora for the Wazi Aquarium for doing this uh, amazing event. Uh, I recognize some faces that were here yesterday, so probably we're going to listen a few things that were already repeated yesterday. But I don't do my workshops by the book, so I don't follow any lines, so I just let it go. So probably all workshops sounds a little bit, some things are similar, but in general everything is different. And uh, since I don't prepare the artscape either, so Let's get started. Uh, I don't know if this light is too strong for your eyes. It's okay? Because it's good. So in this way, you can see some of the details uh, in the artscape. Because otherwise, uh, everything will be a little bit uh, dark. Because I'm going to use uh, dark rocks plus dark soil. In the end, you don't see the details on it. And I pretend to use uh, a light, even if this is too strong. So we can add another light. and. Uh, probably you can see it better, okay? So let's get started. Um, I'm going to lay down for the soil in the tank. It's the first thing I do in all my tanks before I start placing the artscape. Some people like to put the uh, artscape and then so use some platforms uh, underneath the rocks just to give a little bit more volume. Uh, we can use some bags of uh, volca volcano uh, rocks, lava spit, whatever you want. Um, and the better is to use uh, that in some bags, because in some bags you can uh, always, when you dismount the tank, you don't get it completely mixed with, uh, with the soil. The, um, the soil I'm using here is Amazonia 2, so it means they have uh, some root tops in the packaging. Uh, will be an extra uh, nutrition that we can put in the soil. That is more or less what I usually do with my tanks. Uh, if you follow my work, I use a lot of root tabs on it because I prefer to don't uh, use any kind of uh, different material than the soil because I tend to reuse my soil over and over and over again. So my record was about nine years. So just reusing the same, but the big problem of reusing the same soil all over again in case we have uh, cryptocurrents, they tend to grow as soon as they get a little bit of light. There is some roots on the soil, on the surface of the soil, with the movement of the water. Having some shrimps just dig a little bit on the soil, it's exposed a little bit the roots, you probably will get cryptocurrents again. But the most important thing, 
those crypto Koreans will grow in their very amazing spots, more or less, or even like in nature. So, because they, the roots or even the soil will be a little bit exposed in the areas that usually they are close to rocks. So somehow, even if you try to put it there in the tank, they will look even better when they are revealed. So this is the only problem of reusing soil. Um, the soil should not be washed. Uh, even the, the soil that you have in the tank, of course, if you are using a lot of nutrition underneath or soil, uh, you can give them a good rinse, but not in the new one, in the old one. So usually when I dismount the tank, I just flood the tank with water, mix it up with my hands, I take the water out, and then when I'm pumping water in, until the water gets a little bit more crystal. So it means all the remaining, all the plants, they were on the soil, I catch them with a the net. So the soil, all the dust, or part of the dust is gone, and the soil is clear. So we can reuse over and over again. So when we reuse the soil, we need to add root tabs. But when I mean root tabs, we need to put root tabs. It's not just one here, one there, one there. Put root tabs and then cover quite well the soil because if you cover it, there is no nutrients passing through to the water column. So this is one of the reasons why we should fertilize a little bit less afterwards. Okay? So we, you have two ways to do it. So you can just fertilize by going for estimate index and put a lot of fertilizer in your tank by excess. Let the plants take and later on you take the excess in the water change. Or you can do fertilization by lower levels, by uh, what we call lean fertilization. is lower quantity. Even if you do it once or twice a week, it's okay. So plants will take immediately what it is on the water and later on, what is not available, they will take directly from the roots. Okay? So let's get started. I will use the, some reuse it one from, not reuse it. It's the open bag from yesterday. I, ah, here are the, the root tops. So I will just lay down the, the root tops down. I will try to find them in the other bags too. use all we have so I don't need to I'm not that strong enough so we should need to cut it Even if I intend to use sand afterwards, I don't think I will, but if I intend to use sand, what I usually do, the first layer, I will move it down backwards. Because if I use the sand, if you guys follow my work, I will always place the sand at last. Because I don't want the sand be with some soil over it, okay? Unless you want to make a small division with a small garden or whatever, so you can already place the sand, you put the soil, you take the division from the middle, it will be okay. But even that, uh, in a very natural um, looking, I prefer to use the soil. And then I will put all the sand on the top, on the front of a glass, like this. So with the brush, I will take towards the back. So it means the sand will start covering, even if it is a big slope over here that will cover and in the front will be a very thin layer, okay? 
let's get another bag. It was a big mistake from their part say, you can use whatever you want, so I will use. They will re re regret afterwards to say, well, we should not say that. So, but they already know me from last time. Never say that to Aquascaper. Use whatever you want, no. They want to be just polite, I understand. But, uh, but with aquascaping, it's not how it works, right? When it's say, hey, you can use whatever you want. <laughs> Careful what you say. Okay, so let's start to build. I was looking for this. Okay, the first thing we usually do when we work with artscape, doesn't matter if it's rocks, doesn't matter if it's wood, wooden rocks, we need to have a focal point. And uh, if you want, we can always play with the rule of thirds. If you don't wo go follow the rule of thirds, because probably some plant will do that, but we need to start from something that will probably will be the focal point, or maybe not, but you need to place the first one. Now the first one usually is the most important, because all the flow, the hardscape, will come from the first one. So I had one here. Let's see if I don't make any damage. <laughs> so. oh. Aquascaping all good for the back. Sure. How you know it's not too heavy for the, the construction? So, if we buy a tank and the cabinet is made of carton, you don't put water on it. No, it's not a problem because the cabinet, if you don't move it, if it stays, if it is blocked, mostly the back horizontal plane, plane coming on the top and the bottom, this will never fall. Okay? Of course, if you have a cabinet that has one side, four divisions, okay, there is no reinforcement on the back. If you jiggle a little, <laughs> it can fall. But usually, this kind of cabinets doesn't need to be a aquarium specialized cabinet, but it's well reinforced on the back, will hold, okay. But there's no problem for, on for the a glass? For the glass? No, because the, this, for example, this cabinet, has completely wood from one side to another. Yeah, but the pressure, pressure no, is but there is this is uh, there is some cabinets that is empty, so they have some so just some reinforcement, some uh, stripes on the middle to reinforce. In that way, it's better to use some a little bit of styrofoam, mm. so you can just place it. But yeah. come on, a rock like this will not break it, unless you have very thin glass. So, have in mind that the tanks itself, this is made in 10 millimeters, if I'm not wrong, because it's a 90-45-45. But it's a 90-50-50, would be better to make it in 12. So, the bottom is also 12. Can we imagine the thickness of that? Yeah. The, of course, the bottom must be even. Be careful with the screws, because sometimes some cabinets, they are homemade, they have some screws, and this, this, the screw is a little bit above the, the bottom. Mostly when the, the tank gets out some water and you get it in between, it starts to inflate. So it means that sometimes that wood can go down a little bit if it is not a good quality wood. 
and the nail or the, the screw can be a little bit above and that can crack the tank. But you can have a, use a mat in between one and the other. Just protect that. But usually if you have a solid base where the tank is placed, there is no problem. Okay? Yes? Do you th do you think so? <laughs> we'll know. check on the end. We will check in the end. Probably, uh, the I will talk about the proportion. Can you? I uh, give me one of those rocks. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's okay. Doesn't go anywhere. Okay. So you are asking if the rock is too big for this tank. One of the big secrets in aquascaping, when we do something, is all working with the length and height of the tank. Keeping the things in proportion. For example, if I grab this rock, if I put it there, do you think this rock is high enough to stay in balance in the tank? That one probably is too big. Probably. But I didn't have any soil yet. And the idea is just to bring something because the water level will be here. You see, we have the volume. So if you have the plants coming like this, yeah. maybe it makes sense. I get it. <laughs> right? I get it yeah, I it so anything should be more or less in proportion when you start building it. Uh, the, the difficult part when we start is just to find which is the best spot to show the details, where are the details, where the, the rock looks better or not, but doesn't mean that it's finished yet. I use just one rock to hold it here, but then I will continue using more rocks to work it over here. Don't leave the rocks just alone. Okay, so let's go. Oh, we'll just turn it a little bit. Can we get another one? Yeah. That one. The, that one. Yeah. Thank you. This rock will be here, but in the end will disappear. Because I want just something to hold the rock in position. Later on, I will use a little bit more rocks. I will get a little bit more soil, raise the level of it, so we can get everything in proportion. But most important now is to be sure the rock doesn't go anywhere. Okay. It doesn't go anywhere. So let's start working on that. Even this crack over here somehow will look nice and give a little bit more depth to what we going to use. These lines, everything is go about the lines. Then I will just increase a little bit more of the soil. I will use a little bit more of rocks over here. And even this small gap could be interesting just to add some small rocks over there. So in order that uh, we can use just small plants and also play with the shadows 
3D is also very good because if all the light comes just over one single part, we don't have shadows, we don't have three-dimensionality. Three so we need to have a 3D shape on it, okay? Okay, let's continue working. There is more rocks over here. Oh, here we go. For the moment, it looks a little bit symmy uh, s with symmetry, okay? But uh, let's work a little bit more. This up one is a little bit higher. This is a little bit lower. It's just a question of playing a little bit with the height, and we get there. Look to the extraction right now. We had just one big rock and suddenly just all these details. We have just a small path over here. We start getting something. So we already have some uh, path. We just increase a little bit here, a little bit more rocks. We're working in a triangular shape so far. Doesn't mean I'm not going to a V shape anyway, okay? Do we have a hammer? We don't have a hammer, right? Yeah, I can get one if you want. No need. <laughs> okay, so we start getting a little bit more depth right now by just adding and taking this one. So this is close. It's getting far away, it's getting smaller. Okay, if I take this, we have a, a gap. If I place it, it's like this is still going. So let's keep adding rocks. I told the guys in the beginning, this will be heavy. And will be heavy. I also said that I, going to, I was going to bring the big gun, so Space there is not that big. Oh. Touching the glass is not good. But since it doesn't move, we are still okay. Oops. I'm not going to smoke, but I'm uh, just to protect that, just in case. Okay.
But a tank without a scratch is not a tank. No, yeah. no it's not scratch. Look, I left this rock just, I put it there just to see if I, there is a spot to put anything. But you see how it works, the three-dimensionality three immediately, look. From that side, it looks like this rock as an uh, extension. So if you start joining the rocks together, even if the rock is not the perfect shape that you want, you can build it from that, okay? I will leave that for plants. We still need to use plants, right? Yeah, we'll be good. Yeah. There is any questions from social media? Someone asks something or nothing? Nothing yet. Oh, so good. <laughs> I explained really well, huh? Not exactly here. No. We should never touch what is right from the very beginning. Okay, I was looking for something, maybe it's this. You see, for those that know what they're talking about, there is no event, if there's no rain, there's Yeah. Um, through social media. Yeah. Someone is uh, asking the tank size and the approximate weight of the hardscape you're using now. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Not the first one. The, the first one is the, easy. the size of the tank is 90, 45, 45. The volume or the <coughs> should be around. I think we'll not go over 100 kilos. This one probably 20, this one, oh not even 70 kilos, it's not that much. I think the heaviest one is this one and this one. Uh, this is a little bit more, probably 15, 20 kilos. This one probably 15 and all the others. I think in the end, maximum 60, 70 kilos. It's not that much. Yet, we don't know. Maybe we can add a little bit more stuff. Back. So somehow we are almost close for the hardscape. Almost close. Can I ask something about the hardscape? Sure. When I'm looking at it right now, you are going for the V shape you already did from the beginning. But somehow. What I'm looking at here. Yeah. 
on the left hand side, I see all the lines going basically left. And you have a lot of small thin lines. You are seeing structure. left, you are seeing right. And on so the, yeah, and on the right hand side, yeah. You, okay, you have the, the conflict in lines, but you don't have that fine here you have a lot of fine lines. Yes. Accentuating the movement to the left. Where on the right hand side you don't have any fine lines. Don't but it's but it's this is fine. why this is a focal point. So I want everybody looks to it first. This one is just a complement, something that will follow the, the, the rest of the artscape. So we cannot find two rocks the same. No, so in this way, we move it here and slightly here. I don't want this to be the focal point. I want this to be a focal point. But this is what the Between the colors and the, the shades between the two, you have too much of contrast making you go between them? Sorry, I didn't understand. The you have a lot of contrast in how the, the rocks are shaped. Yes. Color. Yeah. So doesn't the, the big contrast in the shape and color make your eyes go from left to right, left to right, because you have that big contrast? Not really. It depends how we're going to plant. Because this is still a little bit more darker than this. I am going to add the last layer of soil, and then I'm going to still increase or lift a little bit the rocks. They will not stay like that, because if I put more soil, this will only see a little bit. I want to lift it a little bit. I want to reinforce this side. So we're going to check that afterwards. Here, let's go hold the baby like that. Oh. I think we'll last uh, at, at, at least till the end of the workshop. There's uh, another question for uh, yeah? social media. Someone is uh, asking, wouldn't be the right side of the tank difficult to clean because one of the stone is touching the glass? The left side? No, the right side. Uh, the right side, I'm sorry. Yeah, not really. <sighs> if you use a small razor over here, we'll be able to clean. But uh, I use that rock for one reason, because I want to raise the soil. I want to also add more soil over here. So I want this to have um, more close to the, the glass as possible. So we can almost close the gap as soon as the plants, we don't see this line of, uh, on the background. A lot of people use artscape in touch of the glass. Uh, usually I avoid it to be easy to clean, but like a wise man once said, I'm not the one doing the maintenance, so... <laughs> but even, even uh, if I was me, uh, that is easy to clean. It's not a big deal, huh? Okay, get the brush for the final details. If we need to move a little bit the, the rocks, it's now the time. So why we do the slope? Because everything it says so flat, if we use more or less the same size, we don't see what is behind. So we increase the slope like this towards the back to give depth. So even if you use small plants, they will be visible, okay? Usually I don't go for a big layer of soil, even if it is in the front, I don't use a big layer, just enough to plant. We need something there to close that gap. Maybe this, 
Let's see. Yeah, it works. Then we disguise that with plants. Should not be a problem. We have the same issue on the other side. Good. Uh, can I ask you something? Of course. I have a two meter aquarium. Yeah. If I want landscaping like this, how much do you think it will cost? But But ask me this, <laughs> that is not uh, not uh, the correct question. Because you need to to ask me if I bought all the materials how much can cost me? Or you are asking me to skate your tank. <laughs> it's completely different. No, 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 no. I mean, if I buy it myself, because... So, I see how it, you it, it depends, it I depends on the quantity of the artscape you're going to buy. Uh, this is, of course, uh, we are using rocks, but we can use wood. There are big pieces of wood. Uh, it depends also how, how much volume you want to create inside of the tank and what style of layout you want to create inside of the tank. Some people love the Oram aquascapes, like being like in kind of a mountain or something like that. It's relaxing. But uh, after one, two, three months, it's more or less the same. And people start getting fed up. A natural aquarium, so everything can transform. You can give a shape, you can trim plants, can be replaced, you can get the volume, can get color, can be completely different. So the bigger the tank, just answer the most uh, uh, honest way. The bigger the tank, the more it costs. <laughs> more it I costs. Know, I know. <laughs> the, the problem is I can't place any plants because my Americans eat everything. So it's only rock and wood. <laughs> So the, the thing is, you need to consider if you want to add plants, you should have to consider livestock. Because livestock probably is not suitable. Otherwise, you want to feed them with uh, greens. But these greens, I think, become a little bit more expensive. It's better to give them spirulina and not give them <laughs> live plants. Huh? So uh, that's it's a tricky question, and I don't know how to answer to that. Uh, it depends how you want to create. Even for those fish, if they usually eat everything, probably they don't eat Anubias. So you can go for the more resistant plants, some plants that they will not touch. So you can keep the livestock <laughs> and you go for something that they will not touch. They will not won't eat. Some plants are more resistant than others. And they don't demand uh, so much, um, I would say, energy or some CO2, uh, so much light. So somehow you can keep a tank, even beautiful, some uh, in the different way, combining the two worlds. If you have big uh, um, uh, South American fish, probably go for Echinodoros. Sword, big, big sword plants, big sword plants, probably they will not touch. Okay, I think it's the better. You can combine the both of two worlds. Sorry? Sure. It's not a big deal. Okay, I am almost done with the artscape, so now it's just time, and a good advice for all of you, when you scape something at home, just take one, two days to look to it, if it is perfect, if you don't change anything, if you really like how it is, if you're going to change, that is the moment, because otherwise, after you plant, 
be very difficult to start taking things from the, the tank. Okay? This is the better way. What do you think? Good? We only have less than one, one hour, so if something o is not as well, we still have time. Till six, we still have time. We take it, we, we, we restart, we do something else. Okay, so let's plant, right? Let's prepare the things. Someone can help me? Can you help me? We just need to glue a little bit here. Or we cut this. Uh. Oh! Uh, help me just to... Oh, I didn't... Should put here, not there. Can you put a little bit tape on this corner? Please. So this holds like a table. No, it's just like this. If you don't mind. Oh! <laughs> that is faster. So, we have a strong table. Now, let's take the gloves out. And start painting this. This is the best part. This is the best part. Can I ask you one of the video? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tell me, please. The rock you had there on the floor. Which one? Uh, the one that between his feet right now. Here? No, between his feet on this? the floor. On the floor. Here? No, floor. No, 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 no. This one. Yes. That one. Couldn't that have been used on the right-hand corner because it has the darkness of the left rock? And you the are line? just looking for the darkness. <laughs> I, 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 will, I will show you one thing. Wait, wait. Yeah. You are just looking to the darkness. What? And now? They are all the same color, right? The thing is, that one, this one, has dust on it. If you have uh, This is not enough to brush it. Okay? If you have a toothbrush, all this, because was the last one on the, the crate. So there is dust on it. If we scrub this, it will be the same color as the other ones. You are looking to them. I was looking at too much of the color contrast between the two, yeah. 
but it's still there. It's all black. This is the one is not darker than the other. One is a little bit dirt <laughs> than the other. It's just dust. All in the end, they are all black. But that shape, I don't like it because that shape would be nice if the tank was one meter and twenty, and we place it just here. So we have one, two, three, but it doesn't fit. And this is why I replace and put this one. Because that one was supposed, when I pick it up, I'd say, well, maybe. But in the end, even this one that was probably much better than this will not fit. It's a 90 centimeters tank. I cannot make it larger when the tank is smaller. Huh? Even that one, that lady said, don't you think that rock is really big? Yeah, you can you imagine? It doesn't fit, so I had to try to change it somehow. So it works. Okay, so let's go. This is the best part, right? Let's start with these ones. Then I will leave the other part. Okay, I have here Cuba. Monte Carlo e Cryptocorine Parva. Then I have there Yunkus Repens, Heliocaris Aciculares. I have here, if my memory is still good, Liliopsis Brasiliensis or Liliopsis Nova Zelandae. I have Rotala Orange, Rotala Orange Juice, uh, Orange Juice, Rotala Rotundifolia H. Ara, and Bacopa Morneri. So Bacopa Morneri will give some very compact growth, similar to Hotala Green, but instead with more rounded shape. Some edges will look nice because you can trim will be slight green on it. Okay, so let's get start. Let's go with the Monte Carlo. So what I usually do to prepare the plants, I grab it, take the rock wool, put my hands all above the rock wool, I take it off. So here, what I do, I split it in a few parts and just start placing a tank. Okay, we can just put this in small uh, parts, but since uh, we need to move on, I will make it more full so we can finish this a little bit early. Okay, so all the same process, we hold it. All like this. Even those small shots, the good thing in uh, Mon uh, Monte Carlo, this is growing always pointing down, okay? So even if you take something like this, if you plant it like a stem plant, a normally stem plant, when it starts to spread, it always goes down. So it doesn't matter if it is a little bit up or not, but just to make it this a really nice and uh, all really detailed so i believe if this tank goes well no major problems i give more or less one month and <laughs> will be full and complete i prefer to use monte carlo like this and then later on uh, I will plant some Heliocaris in between or some Liliopsis. So I pretend in this cape to mix up a little bit the foreground plants. Okay. This takes a little bit more because uh, I cannot join all of them in my hand, but uh, as soon as we get to the air grass style foreground plants, yeah. we speed up a little bit again. So let's try. Right. 
what I usually do is I hold it, like I explained, very close to the rock wool. I will take it off and I then place them in my hand like this, all the roots pointing down. So it's easy to split and put it there. But at home, just split it in small parts and take your time, okay? You should take your time and planting is a therapy. We should not rush the planting part. Just have the joy. Yes. Where here? Yeah. Will not be in the shadow. Uh, it will be on the light. Yeah. No, the, the light is just placed down, so I can work. So we need to move it, then uh, a little bit. Yes. If someone in the audience has a question. Oh. Yeah. We uh, have a microphone. <laughs> if we have a microphone, we have a microphone. Oh, but a microphone, I cannot be planting and... Uh, oh, uh, you mean for the audience? Oh, oh, so I am uh, sound and clear. Oh, okay, good, good. No, I thought it was about me. What are you planting now? Now I am planting Emianthus cuba, Emianthus calitricoides cuba. And I am planting uh, after Monte Carlo because it's smaller. So I intend to keep small plants, even if I had air grass, but this one tends to spread over here and over there. In the end, after small and a few trimmings, they will try to blend somehow, but this one is a little bit uh, bigger than this one, okay? This is Emiantocalitricoides cuba. They are very similar. You can take it. It's very similar to to Monte Carlo, but this one demands a little bit more trimming than Monte Carlo, okay? We start getting a little bit practice, but it's normal. We escape tanks. Our I escape tanks for exhibitions, so we need to move fast. What's your record? Seven tanks in one day. Okay. From uh, 150 till 60 liters, but uh, we stay in the middle. 150, 150 uh, 120. 90, uh, all mixed up, seven tanks, which was not even in one day, it was seven tanks in six hours. Yeah. So, <laughs> but not like this, uh, some tanks were less plants than others, so, but anyway, it, it takes a lot. We have uh, another question yes. on social media. Someone is asking why you are using both Monte Carlo and DHE Cuba, because they are pretty similar. They are, they are pretty similar, but not the same. And this is why Monte Carlo usually tends to be a little bit bigger than, Monte, the, than uh, HC. HC, I am planted towards the back because I want it to look smaller, just to keep the depth and keep the proportion towards the back. Just that. I, 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 I told the same thing to you. Well, I think you asked me why I'm using this one, no? 
Cuba and with Monte Carlo. How was you? <coughs> so for the same reason is that just the keep the scale. This is smaller than Monte Carlo. Even if they blend and come along together in the center, it's not a big deal. In one way, it's even better for Cuba because Monte Carlo tends to bring it down. So we'll give a little bit extra, less maintenance after all. But the reason is just that. Small, backwards, bigger, front. And this is why I'm going to use Liliopsis in the front, Heliocaris on the back. Okay? Because Liliopsis, after we trim a few times, Liliopsis tend to stay a little bit thicker. <coughs> and uh, Heliocaris in the background. So if you look on the front, you see something similar on the background. Since it's very thin, we'll lo uh, it will give sense of depth. Uh, can we get some paper to clean the front glass? I don't think we have here. I will, uh, I will get some. You get some, please? Oh, yes. So, no, it was here before. But okay, so far, already some pots. Then in the end, maybe we can make a, a quiz. And we count them all. The one who get closer, I will offer some plants. <laughs> now, now is we need to guess, huh? So. Man, you can come. You can come the front glass, unless you don't want to stay in the video, huh? <coughs> Uh, it was not full. I have used a lot yesterday. No, I will not put here. Otherwise, I will sacrifice too much their maintenance. So <laughs> it's better not. <laughs> we should uh, make it the things a little bit easier for them too. So it's better don't be mean to them. Oops. Uh, so do you have any questions regarding the plant selection, the artscape? <coughs> Anything you want to ask? Uh, what type of? What type of? Oh. Stone. What type of stone do you use? Soil? No, it's stone. Uh, it's stones. Time. This is Royo Co, yeah? Royo. Black. Black Rio. Yeah. Black Rio. Nice. Uh, that is so many names. Does it give minerals to the yeah. water? They will. They uh, tend to increase the hardness of the water. So I don't know the hardness over here, but I believe since it is a shop, um, in case the hardness is really high, they need to start dosing uh, reverse osmosis water for water change. Probably not so much minerals because in the end the rocks will release them. Uh, but in the first mounts, we need to consider the soil will take it also the hardness. So the black soil tends to absorb the hardness of the rocks. Um, how much is the hardness? Oh, he's on the phone. So I will ask him later. So to know the hardness of the water over here, the tap water, do you know? Uh, it's very hard. It's very hard? Very hard in Belgium. So probably it's reverse osmosis that you're going to use here. Yes. 
Uh, so I have a nano aquarium at home. And yeah. I, I used to I used serious stones. Serious stone is the same. Yeah, it's the same. Uh, and they leaked too many minerals in the water. And I even used products, but it was because it was nano. I had the problem of too many hard hard work. But uh, you were using reverse osmosis yes. water? Yes, I was. Uh, re but uh, you have used uh, the na the tank was very very small. Very small. Yeah. The thing is, uh, yeah, the bigger the tank, the more balance we get. If it's something really really small, it's probably uh, difficult to keep the values right. Huh? Yes. Um, the only way is just to do a little bit more water change, try to balance that. But for example, for me at home, uh, I have hardness around three, four degrees. This is, uh, my water is very soft. I can use almost everything. However, I have a small issue on beginning of any aquascape with new soil because the soil absorbs the hardness, injecting a lot of CO2. So it means it's like using reverse osmosis water and no buffer at all. So I need to keep an eye if my minerals are going off. But usually it's easy because we start seeing some melt. The water becomes a little bit cloudy. And the water becomes a little bit cloudy. We already know that it's getting acid. Minerals are gone. And uh, we need to do a water change or start adding some buffers. OK. Yep. Yeah, thank you. I was clear enough. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. Are oh, you get a okay? Good. Is there any sort of stone or wood that keeps the water clear? Because uh, water clear? you told me how bigger, how yeah. better the water is. But my water, uh, I clean it once a month, something like that. Yeah. It always gets uh, a little brown. Yeah, but brown comes it is from clear, the wood, right? There is only wood. one piece of wood in it. But it doesn't matter. The, the piece of wood, if it's mo mainly bog wood, for example, uh, like mangrove or something like that, they release a lot of tannins. Yes. So if you only change the water or 50% or 30% of the water once a month, it's normal that this happens. So to get the water clear, I can tell you some product that you can use uh, and reuse anytime you want and gives the water clear all the time. You get some, they probably they have it, it's sick and puri gen. You add it on the filter, that will remove the tannins and the water become clear. There is no yellow water anymore. But maybe your fish will like the yellow water. It's just something aesthetic. It's, something, it's yeah. nothing bad. Huh? <laughs> Indeed, that's it's why I bad. ask, because uh, I know a lot, but yeah. sometimes I have to learn to. <laughs> I'm uh, very honest about that. Yeah. I have a lot of fish I know that like clear water, but I have some fish that I know that always go to the rocks fish, and but sit fish, there, hide. <laughs> but look, fish hide for any reason, not because the water is brown. Fish usually hide because of two things, or they are stressed, they want to breed yes. or they are some predators on the water. Just mm. that. Yes. It's not uh, because the water is uh, a little bit brownish or not. Since I have visited uh, one shop, I don't know if you, s if you both follow or not my, um, my channel on YouTube. I visit a shop in, um, I was there for an event really. Uh, in uh, Spain and they do mainly biotopes. There is uh, also a few videos that they will be released in the future mm -hmm. and um, the water in some tanks is brown but when I mean it's brown it's brown but that was made especially for the livestock that is there so they love that but this if we get fish from the wild Probably most of the fish we see nowadays in the shops, they are not coming from the wild. They are coming from European or from breeding. So they never met or visit any river uh, at all. So, but that kind of species, usually he likes that. So taking the part of the aesthetical part, I don't see any problem in... Uh, 
having the water with that color. Okay, so let's okay. go for Thank you. Ah, that one is I forgot. This one is cryptocorin parva. I put it more under the shadow because this one tends to grow very, very slowly, not so high demanding. And now I will get Eleocaris, the Sicularis, and that one will go with sm some details over here and moly on the sides. But I will mix it up, okay? Then for the front, I will use Liliopsis. <laughs> and why Liliopsis? Because um, Eleocaris usually when you trim, afterwards, they tend to grow tall again. Liliopsis, after trim, they stay very, very short. And it's thick, dark green, and will start growing also, and mix it up a little bit over here. But the idea is, more or less this shape and smaller. But after trimming, OK? Yes? We uh, have another question from yeah? social media. Uh, is it better to plant dense straight at the beginning, or can you start using less plants? Uh, no. The more plants you use in the beginning, the better. More balance, uh, because uh, most of the soils we use, they have a lot of nutrients. And uh, if you plant densely, uh, not only aesthetical for you in the short time it will be better, but also to fight algae. Because uh, let me explain this in a different way. Suppose you spend a lot of money in your tank, cabinet, light, CO2. You bought the soil, the rocks, you spent almost 2,500 euros, more or less, just like that. And then you go into spend 25 euros in plants. <laughs> does it make any sense to you? For me, it doesn't. Right? So you made all great, spent all the money, and then in the end you put five pots. So what do you expect? All that quantity of soil for five plants, the risk of getting wrong is not high, it's super high. So it's better you keep the tank with the rock soil like this, you wait, you save some money, when you plant, you plant densely. It doesn't need to be like this, huh? okay? They only told me, you can use whatever you want. So I am just doing what they ask, so I use what I want. So what I mean, you should use some quantity, okay? The more you can, the better. In case you can't use a lot of plants in the beginning, because you don't have any chance to plant densely, at least use some floating plants. Because floating plants will take a lot of those nutrients, will give some shadow, and somehow they will balance the water. Okay? If not, we can get really problems afterwards, because in general, Plants will get algae uh, because there is a lot of nutrients in the water unless you do water change almost every day. But that, even for the tank, is not good. You cannot keep that balance. Okay? So the better way is plant the more you can. I'm not saying to use 300 plants like me. It's not the, the situation here. Look, you already looked at me and say, what? 300? <laughs> They, no, want, they want you to. Eh? No, this is, <laughs> since they say to me, use whatever you want. Yeah. No, no problem. But it's not even close. It's not even close. But probably in this tank we're going around 100. Okay. More or less. That's a lot. If you really want a good tank, you have to use a lot of plants. It's fish like plants. <laughs> so I, I come in here to place just artscape and not make any sense. I need to plant, so. <laughs> this is the thing. Oh. I'm not throwing away, yeah? But uh, I, I tend to use a lot of plants because in the end result, I want to, to show almost how the tank looks like when it is finished. And even for the shop, it's amazing because you can come here after one month and you're going to see the tank already with a huge improvement. Plants growing everywhere. Say, well, I want something like this at home. In fact, but... You need to start probably with less plants, but uh, for them it's, it's good. So you can come here after one month and see, well, this is growing well.
this one will be really fully planted. I could went just for a white sand, but I said, well, let's make it full. Maybe they will invite me again in one, two months just to trim. <laughs> we bring the tank back, we do another workshop, how to trim the tank. Are you hearing, Len? No. <laughs> this, this part doesn't matter for him. I'm saying, I'm saying that uh, next workshop I will come to show how to trim the plants. I will not be too far away, yeah, in one month. By the way, are you coming to Vivarium? Yes. No? Yes? yes? So Vivarium will have a lot of uh, live events there. Uh, probably n all at the same time, but because we still have the VIP contest, aquascaping. Maybe some news are coming very soon. You know, with this COVID thing, we never know until we have the confirmation, but at least one aquascaper is already uh, confirmed and we probably two more, but I cannot give the names, but I will give the just the suspense and saying, well, 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 you guys will be surprised with that. From? Malaysia? From? I cannot say. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot say. I can say. Until we have the real full confirmation and everything, now the problem is everything is changing very fast. This is the problem. Last year, event year was quite close to not happen. Uh, it was almost on the peak of the pandemic. So it was still possible, but a little bit scary. So you can travel and probably you cannot come back. For me, it was not a big deal. I could always come to my second home, to Aquaflor in Netherlands. They put me asleep and, um, in, the, in the gallery. It's okay. I have a sofa. I have a tank that took care. Just fine. Felipe. Yeah? We have another question. Sure. Um, someone is asking um, how you feel about the dark start method. Some people use it, some people love it. It's like the dry start and some people hate it. So I only feel that dark start is, is good somehow if you are using ADA Amazonia like this one and um, you intend to use mostly in vitro plants. That is the main reason because if you are going to potted plants just forget it. In vitro plants are more sensitive to ammonia than potted plants, okay? And this is why we tend to use the um, dark method because dark method is, is cycling the tank, just hardscape with soil, we cycle it, we take all the cycle of ammonia and then we take the water out and we plant. If we, you intend to use just, just in vitro plants and also in combination to ADA Amazonia, is probably one of the most popular uh, soils or aqua soils in aquascaping, uh, it's better you do it. Otherwise, you probably will face a lot of melting, okay? If you are using potted plants like I am doing here, mm, doesn't matter. Will not make any difference at all in the end. They are very resistant and very strong concerning to that. <coughs> Any more questions? Do you want to know also about dry start? Why people do dry start? Usually I'm not against, not a favor. Uh, to be honest, for me, a tank is to get water as soon as we have done, to add the fish later. 
uh, dry start, if you really want or are into uh, contests, it makes some sense, mostly if you want to spray a little bit, of, a lot of moss all, all over, or you want a foreground carpet growing really, really fast. It makes sense doing that, because since these plants that I'm using now, they came immersed, they never been inside of the water, when we place them like this, like those tanks, you see? We spray once a day, we keep the lights on, eight hours a day, like a normal tank, all the plants will grow faster. That is not the reason why we have them like that, okay? We have the tanks like this because they were going to be raffle, so we don't want to flood, so the winner can take the tank, can flood the tank for the first time at home, having less risk of melt. If we flood now, since I have used a lot of cryptocorins and there is a big chance of a big melt if we uh, flood here, drain again, take home, flood again. So it's better to avoid that. Okay, it's just better to avoid. But this is just because uh, dry start, some people really love to do it, is also one way to use less plants. But all I have in mind, if the temperature is uh, a little bit high inside of the tank, we can get mold. Some plants can die. And uh, then in the end, the tank will probably will not start in the right way. So just be careful. Of course, the melting can also happen if we have uh, water on it. So in one way or the other, problems can happen. Okay. I need to spray them a little bit. Sorry if I am with back, but I am just finishing these parts over here. It's not easy to get access to it. Okay. I will leave these ones for last, if uh, anyone wants to guess what it is. Yeah, so this will be for the details in between the stamp line. So this will stay over here. Let's get the second box. First, let's spray the tank. We are getting there, right? So let's give some color. Go, let's go with the Bacopa, Bacopa Mornieri. Usually to take care of that, if you want to keep the roots, maybe we'll take a little bit. You can just make small bunches of it. I will plant it like this. Some people just plant or put it on the soil just a little bit. I am the kind of guy that uh, 
all in. <laughs> in the transport and everything will be much easier, okay? Otherwise, if you move a little bit the water, what will happen is uh, they will start to float. What I usually do, I give a distance more or less from three stems, three, five centimeters, so they can have space when they start to grow and open. Otherwise, they'll be too close. Somehow it's not bad because they will get a lot of volume, but is there is no um, flow underneath and some can root, okay? So the process is all the same. Otherwise, I will throw you away something to you. A little bit more green. Now we want to give some green over here. Okay. <coughs> Touching and then mix it up the colors over here. I will do the same, a little bit of green over here. Green over here and then mix colors. Okay. When I mean mix colors, I, I mean uh, I will mix it up the rotalas. Okay. This is the most boring part because it's everything repetitive somehow. But uh, of course, seeing this getting shape and getting color is also very, very interesting. But still, seeing repeating the task every time, I'm really sorry for that. But uh, we'll get there. Move to this side, sorry. <laughs> if we use a layer of sand, it will make everything faster because we don't need to plant there. Oh, let's try from here. Oh, why not? <laughs> Much easier, so I can look all to all of you. Yeah, less effort. And I can see the spots now. Do you have any questions regarding any maintenance whatsoever? Growing, trimming? Uh, what type of tweezers are you using? Like uh, Oh, those are... Len, this is from which brand? Aqua Noah. Aqua Noah. Huh? Noah? Aqua Noah, on the right. <laughs> there? Uh. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. This is why I wear glasses, huh? <laughs> so, I will mix it up. And when I said mix it up, I'm going totally mix it up. And I try to keep them more or less the same size. So, without the roots, doesn't matter at all. It's like you are doing a replanting in your tank, right? If you trim, I just want them all the same size. It's much easier just to give the perfect shape. And in this hand, I have here two species of rutala, and these species are now being mixed up. So it means when I mix them, I will not know where I'm going to place them, but still I will get that uh, sprinkle of or blending of uh, rutalas in the background. It's like the same, you take the same species and then you stick a few in the middle. But in this way, having all of them mixed it up it will look even better because we can have uh, orange, well, with these lights being so in the top of the tank, probably will be everything red. So there is no orange, no deep red, because I, I had in my tank at home the, the old scape, not this green part. All that was orange juice, yo, yo, uh, Yohai, uh, Rotundifolia, HR, they are almost the same. They are all full, full, full red. Um, the orange juice is great for those that don't have too much light. So the plant itself uh, cares less light intensity to get color, what is really, really good. But if you have really intense light, in the end it will be more or less the same because all of them will turn very, uh, with the red, very, very intense. Okay. I just changed the, the concept because this was not really what was in mind in the beginning. I was going for a Yagumi, a classic Yagumi, and then suddenly I changed for a Natura Aquarium, and in the end we'll end up more or less with the Brazilian style. So, oh, the only thing that the Brazilian style has is uh, sand in the front. They use it a lot, but I will not go into use it here. I still have the time. I just take the soil out and then I can simply put some um, sand over. It's also a choice, but it's better not do it. We full planted. it. I think being the cabinet completely white, the rocks and everything, uh, having a carpet on this tank will look amazing. And nowadays we don't see it so much because we only see sand, 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 sand. Having a really nice carpet, well trimmed, will make a huge impact and uh, will be very beautiful to see. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the maintenance of this one. Uh, which filter are we going to use in this one? Oase? Uh, filter, yeah. I, which filter are we going to use in this one? Uh, on this tank um, there will be an Oase Biomaster 600 Thermo. 600, okay. Yes. So using this filter is more or less the same we use at Aquaflora 2 and I use at home. So just cleaning the pre-filter every week or every two weeks I would say that is kind of mandatory uh, because if uh, the sponges get a little bit clogged, uh, 
the water flow will decrease a little bit. So you, you don't need to clean the filter that much. You will just need to clean the pre-filter, OK? Um, water change, since we are using ADA Amazonia, uh, I have used it before, even still keeping the water change of 50% once a week. Mostly with this volume of plants should be OK. Uh, but it depends on them if they want to use once a week, twice a week, or just follow what ADA does, that is a certain per percentage uh, per day for the first two weeks, if I'm not wrong, and then just reduce to once a week. So for me, I would simply use it in the normal way. Uh, I don't know exactly because I never used Amazon V2. I never keep the tanks with Amazonia V2, so I don't know if we leach a lot of ammonia, if it's similar to normal Amazonia. But with such volume of plants, I don't think will be needed. Uh, but in any case, you, if you want to reduce the algae for some reason, it will be better to do a uh, water change at least twice a week. Don't do water change like 80%. It's better to do 50%. Even if you need to trim and vacuum your tank uh, a little bit more than one time, you can always do 50% plus 50%. And in between those two, partial water change of 50%, turn on your filters. Okay? So air, oxygen can get in, and then you can switch it off again, and then you can just do the other water change. Okay? This is what I usually advise. Then for trimming or fertilizing, there is so many ways to do it. You need to check the quantity of plants you have. But since the soil is new, I would suggest to don't dose that much because plants in the first two weeks, they will not take any major nutrients because they are still adapting to the submerge. So don't do any crazy liquid fertilizer. Uh, you can follow so many uh, different fertilization routines. Uh, I do myself lean fertilization routine. What means for lean fertilization routine is to dose less than advised uh, because we can dose um, as excess and then later on, we take the nutrients from the water by doing water change, like more or less the estimate index. This is chasing values, more or less. This is five uh, ppms of uh, nitrogen for dot five of phosphorus, or 10 ppms of nitrogen for one of phosphorus. But that is probably too much information for most of you. So what I would suggest is the blend of fertilizer so we will just go there and check what they suggest uh, for a volume of a tank. On the beginning, you can start by dosing just half of what they suggest to use. And you see how your plants are growing. And as soon as they are fully adapt to the submerge, you can start following completely the, what they suggest. Because don't need to start dosing exactly what they uh, ask to do. Because depending on a plant mass, probably you will need even more of what they suggest. But in some situations, because we don't have so much plant mass, we are fertilizing so much and that will cause algae. So each tank is a tank. You should... Uh, Fertilize less in the beginning and see how your plants go and react. If you change your fertilization routine or you change the brand of fertilizer, it's better to do it only after a trimming. Because plants, suppose, uh, just think with me, if you are used to do any kind of uh, um, uh, routine, if someone breaks that routine, you will take a little bit to adapt, right? So suppose that you are 
um, living really fast, so you are very emotional. All your activities are up the roof, and suddenly they give you some medication to say, well, now you need to relax and not going to do nothing. So how are you going to feel? It's more or less like with um, the fertilizer. So if the plants are used to get so much energy and suddenly you cut the energy, what will happen with them? They will struggle. So they will not grow in, a, in the proper way. So the better way is you need to trim them first, then you change the fertilization routine. So in this way, the new stems will, or the new runners will always adapt to the new fertilization routine. Yup. Are we clear? No. So we have uh, just a few here. We'll go there on the cracks of the rocks. So, done, done, done. Done, done, done. We are getting there. Now, Junkus weapons. And then, we'll remain just the carpet in the front. Ah. No problem. Two hours workshop, not even, uh, almost. We are getting there. Uh, 4.30, you are dismissed. If you want a little bit more, he goes uh, get a nano. Probably still have some spare plants. We'll build a nano. <laughs> yeah, all together. <laughs> one place a rock, another one place a little bit of soil, another place a plant. In the end, just praying that nobody touch it and fall on the floor and breaks and doesn't matter. But uh, we can do something. Yes. From Vivarium. Marco. Yes, yes, he is commenting yeah. a lot. He is asking yeah? if you have uh, tips for the ANAC contestants for the last few weeks. I have, I have. I always have something to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he knows it. Yeah, the, what, what I usually suggest uh, for everybody that is taking care of tank for contest. This is the most important part. Because uh, growing the plants, scaping the tank, it's also important, of course, but the way how we finish the tank, how we clean it, we prepare it for presentation, is one of the most important things. The way how you clean it, for example, you have the most beautiful car, and then you take the car for an exhibition with the tires completely dirty. It doesn't look that nice, right? So what I suggest you take the time before you even take the pictures for a contest or you take the time the tank for a live contest is be sure that you start cleaning and start doing their proper maintenance a few days before just vacuum the sand vacuum all part of the soil clean quite well the glass don't let anything dirty if you need to scrub some rocks try to do it but I also have in mind, if we have some slight coat of uh, green dust in the, in the rocks, it's not a big issue. It means that it's natural because the tank is not sterile. Because sometimes people are so focused on not getting any algae at all. And you look to that and it looks the tank was scaped uh, one week ago. So having a little bit of algae, if it is still under control, is not a big deal. Okay? Even online contests or local contests. Clean well, be sure you trim with some advance so the plants are in the perfect shape, in the perfect size. Uh, of course, sometimes it's not easy to guess how they were going to look like. Uh, but at least if you trim three weeks before, you have plenty of time to get the plants ready for the deadline. Because plants after trimming, they take two weeks to release new shots and start growing. Then one week more to get some size. So when we trim it, we need to know more or less which is the volume that you want the plants to grow in height. Okay? Um, this applies, again, for live contests or for online contests. Online contests, of course, if you have more time, it's better to take the picture, not last minute. Take a picture with some months in advance. As soon as you have the tank, ready and um, don't let don't wait for last minute okay but vivarium we have a contest is aquaflora nano aquascaping contest that people take the tank home they escape at home and then 
usually before it was a taco floor, but with COVID it's not possible. So we escape it, they escape it at home, and then uh, they need to bring it to Vivarium exhibition where the public will vote which the favorite. So it means a picture. You can even shit a little bit because you can just, uh, even not being allowed Photoshop, we know how the things work, right? But you change a little bit here and there, but life is very important. First, plants must be healthy. If plants are not healthy, being an aquascaping contest, first thing we need to look, plants. Then artscape, then general composition. Then if the tank is clean, all factors count and matter on the final decision, of course. Okay, we have one, one, two, three, four, five. No, we still have a few, huh? We'll be too early to finish. Ah, okay. Ah. In the end, I brought, uh, let me see if I am right, 200, 280 plants, pots, no, yeah, 280 <coughs> considering those in vitro, the most there. In the end, let's see if we are going to miss something. So three tanks, fully planted, lucky ones that will take those two, because this one will stay, but it's still a lot. But that is the reason, so the end, tanks will need to look good, uh, already with some volume mass, and the lucky one that will take the tank already have some plant mass that will fight or help to fight algae. Uh, will not be fair from my part, just put five pots there and then everything not, is not going well for sure. And even if you are going to do a demo, at least show properly how to do. Of course, not so much quantity of plants because I understand nobody was going to use so much quantity I am using here, but in the end, the result should be close to a finished project. So let's go for a Liliopsis now. I already planted the um, Yunkus repens. I put it in between the Rotalas. So for those that follow my work, usually I put some Yunkus because it's like wild grass. It comes like a wabi-zabi style. Something is getting out or pumping out from a very trimmed part of plants. And now let's go for the carpet. I will use Liliopsis, and this is what wh I was talking about. We take the plants like this, I put it my, on my hand, and then start planting there. So I will take the pot, I grab here, he's here. We need to know exactly the sweet point, where are the roots, where they hold, or you can just struggle, up, and we do it like this. We hold it, we twist it a little bit, it's coming, all the roots are here. Huh? So I, one friend of mine asked me if he needed some help during the event uh, to prepare the plants. I'd say, well, to prepare the plants, not exactly, because um, doing is this that fast, I don't know who. And also to prepare, uh, I know exactly the much quantity I have just to finish. You know, so it turns easier. So someone prepares who is going to lay down, one's upside down. So in the end, I will need to grab them. I need to position in the right place. It will give me even more work to do than preparing them myself. Oh. So this is Liliopsis Nova Zelande. So if you are focused on a, on a camera, I will show how to take and prepare like this. We take here the pot and we take it off. Okay. So now let's plant. How we're going to do? Hold it, take it like this. You can grab it. It goes in between here. Oh, I need to move the light backwards. You see, for the shape, it, between the cryptocorinian and Liliopsis are more or less the same. But later on, the cryptocorinian will become taller than Liliopsis. Well, 
Barbara, yeah. But Liliopsis, after you trim it, it becomes really, really short. And then it stays that way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't demand that much. Even demanding in, in terms of light is CO2 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Not so much. Oh, I need to spray the, the, the soil. It's getting muddy. Yeah. Since I, I like to use a very thin layer, one thing that I can do, in case I, cannot, I can't plant to the front, I plant densely on the back and let them spray over to the front and it's done. We don't need to plant close to the glass. Let the plant grow and get there. Sorry, let me move a little bit backwards. So one another thing that we can do. One, yeah, just to show. If this, no, this is taller. This is short, okay. If this is really tall, we just need This always happened to Ileocaris too, so it's not a big deal. Or you can even trim like this. What I mean, like this, like this, so like this. I think this one is new. Anyway, I don't find the other one. Ooh. Why doing this? They will not become all the same size. So it will become natural inside of the tank. So let me show you. Since I trim it like that, when we put it in the tank, it doesn't look like a straight line. Okay? We can do the same to Leocaris. Even that one, it was there. I couldn't make it. I still can do it. It's not a problem. It's still on the tank. We even before we start to flood, we give a trim. Any questions from social media? You guys, nothing. Nothing at all? Good? I will drink some water. <laughs> we are close. I think probably 15, 20 minutes just to plant this. Oh. It's the, the dust from the soil. So let's do the same. I will just take a few more. I don't know where is the other one, so we use this. Just don't cut yourself, okay? And I was saying that and now, <laughs> oops! No. 
Yeah, it will not be the first time, huh? and not even the last. It's better to place here, otherwise we'll go. So it's shorter. We can just plant it and make it a little bit beautiful. Let's move to this side now a little bit. So we have that side fully planted and there's nothing yet. See, it looks much, much better than be really that huge, tall, but you can do the same with the uh, Iliocaris, Liliopsis. Then in the tank, uh, it's better that you, after you plant, you wait at least till the time you see some runners, okay? When you see some runners and the plant adapt well, so you can trim, not before. Leave it to adapt. Sorry, but uh, I work better like this. Okay? <laughs> Just checking, huh? I concern about the people. You want water? The mask. Oh, there is the rock there. Doesn't matter. It will cover. If there is a little bit of soil, then the plant will go over. Of course, you can, if you still have time, you can split uh, the portions of uh, Liliopsis a little bit more, okay? Even if you don't finish today and you want to do it tomorrow, you cover the tank with a wrap film, keep the moist, light can be off, next day you can continue, okay? How it looks so far? Good? Yeah. Could be better, right? No. Yes. We got another question. Yes. Um, if you have a tank like this at home, how long would it last? Would you need to change it every year, of, or can you make it long term? Look, uh, my tank, actual tank at home, has 14 mounts, 14 mounts, and uh, I just want to escape because I'm getting a little bit fit up, and I want to try something new. Just that. Uh, last tank I had there almost reached uh, two years. Uh, we have tanks at Aquaflora with four years now, 
So it's all about the if you really want to to um, try something new, if you have more tanks. Of course, if you have more tanks at home, probably you are not so interested in rescape it. You can keep it. Uh, but for example, for me, uh, not having, I have one small tank at home, but it's not the same. Not having more tanks or content to show, at a certain point people start to get a little bit fed up of seeing almost the same thing. A tank can last four, five, six years. It depends how you maintain, how you trim your tank. Just that, if you get lazy, because one of the reasons of people getting fed up of the tank is because for some reason it's not more interesting anymore, or you get lazy, or supposedly is uh, working uh, outside and coming home does not have the time, not neither the mood to trim. So the tank start getting bad, so it's time to rescape again. Uh, most of the people that uh, submit the tanks for contests they need a new tank every year to, um, to send because the wow factor or the fact of being new uh, needs to be done. But if you want to keep your tank for one, two, three, four years, you can. The soil can compact, but it depends how you do the maintenance. Uh, so it's not a big deal. Um, all about the maintenance you do, you do. If you do, keep the ma maintenance sharp, you trim your plants, but uh, I understand that uh, after 16 months, uh, two years, people start getting a little bit fed up and they want something new. This is the main reason why people rescape the, the tanks. Just that. I don't, because plants still growing nicely. It's not a big deal. I think this is the main reason why people keep doing something and rescaping. But my tanks at home, I usually keep them longer, at least one year, at least one year. Uh, since now, I uh, probably all become to trouble again. Probably it's time to do something new. So we'll last 18 months again or 24. But being at home, uh, I just learn how to enjoy the things without being stressed or rush. Because the worst enemy you can have is not having patience, is you want to do everything at the same time. Uh, you have a problem, you don't have patience enough to wait for the results, and you start touching everything. So at a certain point, uh, even if you fix the issue, what is good, you don't know the cause. So next time you have the problem, you're going to mix and, and touch everything again, because you don't know which one was the, the right one. So just basic rules, just relax. A tank, or, or this is a hobby, OK? Being a hobby, you just have this to relax, to enjoy. When it becomes a stress, Probably is, it is the wrong hobby for you. I, I, my last job was very stressful. Uh, I was working as ET manager in the subway of Porto. And uh, it was a very stressful job. And I went to aquascaping so many years ago for relaxing and having fun. And I uh, always loved part of the um, decoration, aesthetics. Um, aquascaping for me was uh, a therapy. I really loved that and it calmed down. I just wanted to get home, look to the tank, relax, stream, put my hands inside of the tank. But of course, uh, as every, everybody that is starting, we tend to put our hands too much inside of a tank. And most of the time, we just need to let it breathe, let it follow. Nature doesn't want, like to be rushed. So you need to let it, the things flow normally. Um, people get a little bit of algae, they panic. Algae is just a symptom that something is not right. So you need to fix what it is. Sometimes it's very easy. Most of the algae are morally or more or less related with the CO2, uh, with the maintenance, with the filter. Uh, so if you have the proper flow, uh, 
uh, you have the CO2 set properly, you do the maintenance uh, as it should be on the right time, uh, you clean the hose, you clean the, the reactor or the diffuser, so everything will be perfect once again. But uh, the problem is, we forgot some, most of the time of those tiny things. We just look to the water change, the clean the filter, but most of the time we forgot about the hose. Yeah? Uh, how many tanks do you have at home? Oh, at, at the moment I am crazy enough to have two. But now I am with COVID, I'm spending more time at home. But uh, before, just staying home one week every month, or two weeks every month. Uh, it was crazy just to even take care of them. So suppose you are traveling for two weeks, you get back home after you're doing maintenance a lot of tanks, and then suddenly you have your tanks to clean. And say, well, I doesn't want it. After traveling that much, I don't want to clean that. But still, uh, it's a hobby for me. And since it is a hobby, even if I, I'm traveling, it doesn't matter. I will get back home. I will do maintenance. So I get back tomorrow to Portugal. I still have my tanks there. I will check the filters. I will check the CO2. I'm going to check the fertilization. Because I still look to this, even being professional for about 15 years, it's a hobby. For me, it's still a hobby. But I have two tanks at home. And uh, since COVID, I embraced a project of breeding Microgeophagus Labirates German Blue. And keep them in a planted tank. But instead of being something so high tech like this, I changed the concept. I went more in the breeding process, still having something pleasant to the eyes. More like in the river stream, is not a real a biotope, a biotope, but still very simple, something that I don't need to be uh, so over it all the time and let the time for the fish to breed. It's very, very interesting. If you never breed fish, or mostly, the, um, that lady has the uh, South American cichlids, big ones. I have the South American cichlids, the dwarf ones. So dwarf and big, they have more or less the same uh, feeling, the temperament. So if they are mean, they are mean. If they are strong, they will. So I love them because of that. And always had in mind to breed them in long term, but I never, I never had the, 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 the time, never the patience to just to do it, because it takes a lot of you. So imagine you have a kid, a newborn, so you need to change the diapers, you, ne you need to wake up along. I'm not saying with the fish we're going to do the same, but you need to do water change every single day. You need to vacuum all the debris. There is all the fry moving around, you need to be careful. So uh, the water parameters of the water sh should be the same. So then next day you come to the tank, you see if the fries are there. So if they are there, well, when it will be the time to remove the parents? So this is like taking care of kids. So it, it demands a lot of you. So you need to clean. All the tank will get unbalanced very, very fast. So, but I love that. A new challenge for me is the best. So keeping the tanks at home is still something that I really like. I don't have more because I don't have space. My wife does them now, <laughs> so it's, it's enough. So two tanks, three terrariums. I, I have one uh, fake uh, polodarium whatsoever in the balcony. It's something that I took some plants from uh, the garden, put it there, and um, I just uh, watered them time to time, put some water like this. It gets sun, it gets dirty, birds go there and put some plants, and now it looks like a, a lake. Something really nice coming from that. So maybe I'll someday I'll take a picture just to show. And I don't touch it, just put water on it. But um, it was supposed to be a project just to try something. But I have a lot of stuff at home. So having two tanks, terrariums, and we need to try something different, and this is why. But I have a tank on the kitchen. Eh? <laughs> uh, my breeding tank is on the kitchen. So it is in the right place if we need to do a lot of water change. I use always tap water. 
So I take the water from the sink and then put the water directly on the tank. But this is what I do. But aquaflora, I have a lot. What I mean a lot is a lot. From small to big. From 6 liters to 1,600 liters. So they have something big there. And before I was traveling every 45 days there just to do maintenance. Now we have um, a team, but uh, still part of the maintenance or part of the trimming, part of um, replanting, checking, still on uh, my charge. So they help on the maintenance, cleaning filters, uh, small trimming, small adjustments. And uh, this is how we spent 150 plants. I don't know. <laughs> but you can check. So we still have uh, not finished yet. Not finished yet. Not finished yet. Here. All right. I know. Whew. Almost about the time I said, okay. I still have it. I, I thought I was a little bit rusty with one here not doing workshops and that, so whatever. Planting that massively and okay. So we are using now the small Anubias just to fill those small cracks and gaps just to these guys. Then if I want just to mess with them in the maintenance, I can put a little bit of moss, just, uh, you know, uh, maybe I will not. <laughs> Len, do you want moss in the tank? Do you think uh, the challenge is, is already a challenge enough or you want to make the things harder. Moss is uh, sometime, sometimes a pain in the ass to uh, maintain properly. Who? What? Because the, uh, the cuttings, they stay on the bottom I and have uh, one then it grows everywhere. But it's uh, a very easy way to do it. Very easy way. Yeah, please so tell us I because this was a question. I stop trimming moss. I vacuum moss. So what I usually do, if I have a really big amount of moss over here, what I tend to do, in the water change, I go with the hose, I vacuum it. There is always strings at attached to the, the, the... And then it starts to spread again. When it's time again, I will vacuum it. So it always be flush to the rock. So this is how it looks really nice. The excess, I don't care what you're going to do with that. You can keep it, you can store it, you can glue it again, whatever. But you can place the, the moss, let it attach, you vacuum it. Since you have a little bit, it, it grows again, attached. So you still vacuum it. So it will be always like a small cap of moss. And this is how it looks really, really nice. If it is a big ball, there's a lot of organic waste. If you go trimming, there is moss everywhere and big balls of moss. If you vacuum, there is nothing going down. So for nothing. Yeah, say thank you for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> This is what I usually do with uh, the moss. And it doesn't matter which tank it is, always like that. And if your tank is balanced and well, I will give you three weeks max and the, all the moss is growing so nice again. Okay, so we have one, two, before, and the last one. Okay. Glue, glue, glue. About the glue, my dear friends, we have two types of glue. I am trying, oh, I found it. I was saying, I'm trying to find the, the right one. It's empty, no? Uh -huh. Listen, listen. You can listen. Oh, I just hope it is. <laughs> I had one issue one time, just gluing my luggage, and I pressed, and the super glue hit the glass. The hair, hair bra, everything in the beer. I, I mean, on the glass, to take it, scrubbing very, but here, it hurts. <laughs> to take it off in here, on the air, oh, so careful with that. And usually it's very strong. So it means the liquid one is for hardscape. It's the, the one I use to glue all the piece of wood together, the rocks. The gel is full, the gel. It's good because it will not hurt the rhizome of the plant. So don't use the liquid one or just in last situation in case you don't have, you can use. But so what I'm going to do is split this in two parts. 
going here with the, we can use the cracks just to fit the plant there, but uh, just to show how, how, it, how it's done, I will just place there, like this. Okay. Yep. So we have some nice hole here. I forgot to, to trim the roots, but anyway. <coughs> well, it seems that a lot of people, <coughs> it's COVID? No, it's <laughs> no, I'll say that so loud. Shh. I really hope this gets really stable. Uh, I think it's enough of all the restrictions. Everything can get back to normal. So we can stop using masks, getting around with friends, having more events. Otherwise, I will just do my next workshop next in October of 2022, <laughs> right here. OK, so let's go for the last part. Yeah, he doesn't want the moss. I will keep the moss there. So. No more then, okay? Sorry. I can't see if I'm, oh, okay. And I can place those plants here because they don't need that much light, okay? And my friends, this is the last one, okay? It was a pleasure to be here. I hope you have enjoyed it. And uh, if you still have any other question, please do it. If you want to come around, check it with your eyes. It's done. It was a pleasure. I hope you have enjoyed it. And see you next time, okay? <laughs>